Fairly odd parents, what happened to you? It was always Nickelodeon's number two, in the animation department at least. Right behind SpongeBob. This show wasn't just loved, it was celebrated. And Fairly Odd Parents didn't just have specials, it had events on Nickelodeon. Just about every kid in the 2000s knew the characters. Chester and AJ, Mark Chang, Chip Skylark. Picking your favorite episode was a challenge. Between the TV movies that blew SpongeBob's out of the water, or just shining episodes that stuck in your brain for one reason or another. Imaginary Gary, Father Time, The Boy Who Would Be Queen. Episodes you could just name like the back of your hand, like it was nothing. I feel like I'm stating the obvious here, like this is something that we all know. Then I remember, I'm old now. Some of you guys weren't even born when the show was good. And Fairly Odd Parents hasn't been a respectable franchise for a very long time. The season six premiere, Fairly Odd Baby, debuted in February of 2008. That's 16 years ago. Like other major status quo changes, SpongeBob spin-offs, Twilight with Wings, so on, Fairly Odd Baby was derided at the time. The fandom argued that this was gonna be the moment when Fairly Odd Parents had gone too far, jumped the shark, and would never be good again. And you know, for all we criticize fandom, sometimes the fandom is able to sniff the shit out. While I'd be hard pressed to call season six of Fairly Odd Parents bad overall, it's hard to argue that it wasn't the start of a chain of falling dominoes. Season seven debuts Anti-Poof. You know, it's easy to forget that Seth MacFarlane and Butch Hartman used to work together. Well, it was before Anti-Poof. This is the literal epitome of the can I copy your homework meme. Then we get to the live action movies. Hey, adult Drake Bell. Do you wanna play adult Timmy Turner still in elementary school? No, no, I promise this won't age horrendously. By the time that Sparky came out, I was done with the whole series. Honestly, in hindsight, I find Sparky far worse than Chloe, and the greatest misstep that the series has ever done. I can imagine a world where Chloe worked. I really can. But with Sparky, the fairly odd pet, we all knew the meme even before the episode came out. Porchy is one outrageous dude! He's totally in my face! Wiggity wiggity, wear it up! Back on, party! Sparky is just Poochie, literally. That's the character. This is not different from this. He's the character from an episode of The Simpsons that was specifically designed to satirize adding in-your-face edgy characters. Adding a new character is often a desperate attempt to boost low ratings. Sparky was either a lack of shame or a lack of awareness or both. But before Sparky, I got to see one final wish for from this show. Timmy's secret wish. People have been wanting me to tear into this one for a good while now. And I was just gonna let sleeping dogs lie. However, for reasons that I can't quite come to terms with yet, Nickelodeon wants the Fairly Odd Parents to still be relevant. From Fairly Otter to a new wish. You can't argue that Nickelodeon isn't really, really, really trying to make Fairly Odd Parents a thing again. And with trash piles like this, you can't really argue that they should be trying to make Fairly Odd Parents a thing again. You want a TLDR for this one? Timmy's Seeger Wish is the worst written plot in the history of animation. It honestly impresses me how badly this episode was written. I was angry with Lights Out because it was just the most lazy episode you could possibly make. But Timmy's Secret Wish gives me a different impression. From this episode, it feels like they really, really tried to cram in as many plot holes and bad writing as possible to make the episode make as little sense as possible. Because this episode doesn't make any fucking sense at all. So what's the premise we're working with? It's a big celebration. Timmy is making wish after wish on track for hitting 1 million wishes. We even get a song about it. And you know what? The song's not half bad. I'll give them that. A million wishes never done before. A million wishes like a magic candy star. It's also got some pretty cool references to old episodes. And some of the wishes are completely new. And for the first seven minutes of the episode, we actually get quite a bit of good fan service. Of course, not all the fan service is accurate. You clearly didn't wish for a good singing voice. Ahem. But you know, what kind of nerd would know every episode of Fairly Odd Parents front to back? Honestly, on one level, Timmy's Secret Wish feels a little bit like a finale. This is a celebration of the entire show and everything that's been through in seven long seasons, both in and out of series. After all, a million wishes is a lot. If Timmy made one single wish every single minute, it'd take him like two years. You know, if he never slept. And uh, I don't need a reminder of that one. And you know what? As a wrap up of the whole series, this kind of thing isn't a bad idea. I mean, could you imagine if the last episode of a show as storied as the Fairly Odd Parents was just a random throwaway episode that no one cared about? That'd be ridiculous. Unfortunately, Timmy's Secret Wish starts tearing apart at the seams very quickly. So Jorgen and all of Fairy World sets up this huge parade and a celebration for how great Timmy is. And then every single float is about how he destroyed the city. I got a few questions that I probably shouldn't be having, but I have to ask them. Starting with, why? 
Why is this parade a thing? The plot of the first half of this episode is about a trial, determining to see if Timmy Turner is actually a good god kid or not. He's on trial, so is this parade supposed to be a trap, luring Timmy into a false sense of security so he can get arrested? That's never established, and that would take actually not farting on a keyboard. And that's the level of writing that they were clearly going for in this episode. I can't overstate how broken the first half of this episode is. So the title of this all is Timmy's Secret Wish. And in this episode, we learn that every single wish that every godchild ever makes is recorded. You know what, I can buy that. It makes sense in the world of Fairly Odd Parents. So how does Timmy make said secret wish? Well, he wishes from something from Cosmo. And then he wishes that Cosmo didn't remember making the secret wish. You guys ever consider that maybe the fairy council here would get suspicious that, you know, a god kid gave one of their godparents amnesia? Especially if, you know, he gave it to the stupid one? This gets better though. How does the fairy council figure out that Timmy made the secret wish that no one was supposed to know? Well, Cosmo, the fairy who was specifically wished to forget this, brought in a legal document where the secret wish was recorded. How? 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 If you're curious, no. I I'm not asking how did Cosmo get the paper. No, I'm asking how does a writing flub this bad even happen? And you know what? We're not done here yet. It gets even stupider. I think we all remember the last secret wish, December 19th, 1986. Okay, so this kid here made a secret wish in the 80s, apparently. Joshua Appleby secretly wished for... Chuckles, the fairy-eating cockatiel! <laughs> Alright, I'm listening. Ever since that fateful day, all wishes have been carefully documented to avoid further catastrophe. So, this kid made a wish that wasn't documented. Before wishes were documented. And you know this because the wish was documented. Yeah, no, it makes total sense. Look, I'm gonna go get stoned because that feels very much like the temperature of the room right now. And, and I don't know, you, get, you guys can just watch the rest of the episode. Every wish must be accounted for. Otherwise, godchildren could secretly alter the very fabric of the universe. Excuse me, fucking what? Isn't that like what the rules are for? You know, where if kids are gonna do X, Y, and Z bad thing, the, the, the wand farts and nothing happens? Okay. I know what you're thinking, and there's something to be said for nonsense in cartoons. Uh, how did we, Kronk? Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. You can make a very interesting and engaging episode where nothing makes sense at all. Watch any dream episode from just about any cartoon if you want a good example of that. You can get interesting visuals and have a batshit crazy plot. But that's not what Timmy's secret wish is going for. This is supposed to be like a legit story with stakes that we're supposed to somewhat care about. And yeah, it's a comedy, but none of this is a joke. Or they communicate that it is a joke very piss poorly. For example, if Timmy loses, it's gonna be like he never had his godparents to begin with. Sure, fine, whatever. Foop wants to make that happen because he hates Poof. And yet, despite being portrayed as a smart character, the smartest in the room, he doesn't seem to realize that he won't exist without Poof. You know, until it's too late. Is this supposed to be funny? I'm legitimately asking because I don't know. Because it's not funny. Is it supposed to be dramatic? Because once again, it's not. Maybe I'm just having trouble here because the comedy in the episode baseline is so horrendous. It's the most unfunny episode of the Fairly Odd Parents that I've ever seen. And that's saying something. And I'm not saying that the jokes don't make me laugh. They don't. But what I'm saying here is that the jokes actively destroy the plot. The episode wants us to root for Timmy Turner. He's our protagonist and we're supposed to like him. We want him to win. I think. And I say that I think with absolutely no irony. I have to say that I think we're supposed to want Timmy Turner to win, because I really can't tell what the intention was here. I'm bored. I wish it would rain rabbit dingoes. <laughs> yes, this kid who wishes that it rains rabbit dingoes because he's bored. Best god kid ever. Maybe if it was funny I could buy it, but by season 8, the formula of the show is just so tired and stale. The Fairy Council is reviewing his wishes right now, so we will find out! Don't sweat it, standard procedure, nothing to worry about. And then the opposite happens. Don't worry, you will have plenty of time to prepare. And then the opposite happens. I'm sure the court will assign you the most brilliant defense lawyer in fairy world. And then the opposite happens. I'd call it a running gag, but no, that's just the show. Ren and Stimpy has gross out. Tom and Jerry has slapstick. Fairly Odd Parents has literally this one joke for 90% of its runtime. I mean, it also does have actual running gags. I wish for a group of people that would cheer for me no matter what I do. Yay, Timmy! Timmy! Yay, 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 Timmy!
but to mix it up, we have some jokes where I don't really want to know the punchline. <laughs> well, this brings back memories. This episode can get kind of gross, especially in the second half of the episode. Oh yeah, the second half of the episode. I will now set things right by advancing time on Earth 50 years. Shazam! All right, this is gonna be a simple age up plot. This has been done before. It's not hard, it's simple. You guys can do this. You are about to age 50 years in the blink of an eye. And you will have no memory of your fairies or of this council. A few moments later. Everyone in the world has mysteriously aged 50 years. In breaking news, my back! So everyone has aged 50 years. Okay, that's the premise. Everyone has just suddenly aged. Except everyone but Timmy Turner it's just living life as if they grew up naturally, and this is just a regular day for them 50 years later. The episode can't seem to decide if everyone was just whooshed 50 years in the future, or those 50 years actually happened. And so it kind of picks and chooses both, and it ends up making no goddamn sense. Your mom blew up your house too? Man, it's like no one seems to know how to use their automatic who's it, what's it. Why do they have them at all then? Who invented them? I kind of, sort of see what they were going for here. When everyone gets aged up 50 years, it also refers to the bikes and the houses and all of that. Every item also gets super technical and sci-fi. Except no, when a house ages 50 years, it just falls apart. It doesn't get new computerized systems. Then you got the jokes in part two. These are just as old and tired as all the characters. Everyone is now elderly, and we get to see that repeatedly. Along with some other jokes that are, um, different. Now, let's go meet some girls. There's one now! Ah, surfers! Yeah, I'm, I'm not touching that one with the 10 foot pole. I feel so weird. And not just because I'm wearing an adult diaper. Okay, you, you guys know that old is a spectrum, right? 10 plus 50 equals 60. And I'm sitting here watching this episode and knowing that I have a 60 year old grandfather who, as I record this, is fucking building a house right now. There's a difference between 60 and 90, is what I'm saying here. Well, I could go for a brand muffin and some prune juice. Let's not get into the reason why. Comedy legends of our days, ladies and gentlemen. Also, Crocker just has a portal that just takes him to Fairy World. Just, you know, whenever. Yeah, that's the moment where I quit. Not this episode specifically, but just, you know, the show. Because, like, there's only so high of a level of not giving a shit that I can actually take. And this is a pretty good way to cross that threshold. You don't care. Why am I gonna care? So, for all that it matters to me, this portal sends the two of them to the surface of Neptune. The two of them suffocate to death, and this really was the finale. And Fairly Odd Pet and Chloe episode are just fever dreams I had one day. And I mean, it's better that way. You wanna know what's in the rest of the episode? Uh, here's a black and white shot of an obese Jorgen von Strangle fighting gnomes. Cause they have to fight these gnomes, uh, to get through a window. I'm a fairy! I'm a delicious! I don't know what's really sad here. When you chop the episode into random clips and just shuffle them around, it ends up actually being more funny than the actual episode, and somehow the plot makes more sense. There's nothing more to be said here. The episode is a garbage dumpster fire, and the more you try to take it seriously, the worse it gets. And please, just let this franchise die. Yes, I will review a new wish when it comes out officially. And when that show fails, and Nick tries to reboot the Fairly Odd Parents again in two years, I'll review that one. And then I'll do the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. Because at some point I died and went to purgatory. And this is my punishment for the rest of eternity. 